Welcome to video 13 on Train Controller 10 Gold. In this episode we are going to play a bit with train speeds. We want the speed profile to be yeah, realistic and the train to brake at a certain spot on a station uh, with a high accuracy. And there are two ways to calibrate the train speeds, a full calibration, but I found out in practice Oftentimes a simplified speed profile does the job well enough. Let's have a look. What we have here is a very simple layout, a loop with a station here at the south. I created a simple schedule called clockwise. It starts here at the station, drives one time around and stops here at the station. What I try to accomplish is to have a slow speed, say 40 km per hour in the station. Uh, let's start this schedule. I made a switch over here. In a later video we will have a look how to do that. Yeah, the train is accelerating. It is going to 40. That is because I have set the speed limit of 40 in the station. Then it accelerates when it has left the station to its maximum speed. For this loco that is 78. That is a parameter of the locomotive. Uh, and then uh, yeah, it drives around with its maximum speed on the loop. And then here in this block I want it to slow down, which we can see over here, to 40. Because it can enter the station with this nice slow speed of 40. Then it waits until it is here at the brake marker. And then it starts to slow down until it is at the stop marker right now. And that is what I want to happen. Now the question is, how can we accomplish this? Well, the first thing of course is that we have this block and we have this sensor inside the block. Let me double click it. And uh, this sensor inside the block has a brake marker and the distance is 40 centimeters drive on and then Again, 40 centimeters uh, slow down to the stop marker, which is at 80 centimeters. Of course, you can change these numbers according to the length of the block and the, the, the speed ramp you like to have. Um, then we have the other blocks. Uh, oh, wait, wait, wait. F f f this is an important uh, thing over here in the general top. I have set the maximum speed of this block and also of block number 2 at 40, which means no train can drive faster than 40 in this block. All the other blocks have a block speed of 120, which is higher than any maximum speed of any locomotive that I use. If your locomotive drive faster, yeah, you can uh, enter a number of 200 over here, that does not matter because we are going to tune the locomotive to have a nice visual speed and what I want is to drive it its maximum speed here in this loop. Now let's have a look here at this east block. That is the block where I want the train to slow down, but it still has a speed of 120. But if I double, uh, if I look at the block editor, it has a brake marker, and uh, for this block, which also is 80 centimeters, I use the entire length of the block to slow down. So the train comes in here with its maximum speed, that is the speed that the train has, and then it slows down over 80 centimeters to the 40 kilometers that it enters this station with. That is done automatically by train controller, I don't have to do anything about it other than make sure that I have a brake marker over here. Okay, so this is how we prepare the blocks and now the question is, if we have a look at this station, how does train controller know that uh, from the beginning of the triggering of the sensor that 40 centimeters uh, has been passed or uh, where this stop position of 80 centimeters where it exactly is? Well, to know this we need to tell train controller the speed of this train. The train has to be calibrated. 
such the train controller knows what speeds it runs at every speed step of the 28 steps DCC decoder. And for that we need to tell it some information. Let's go to the train cancel out of here and edit this train, double click it. The train has a speed top and I filled in here at the forward maximum speed 78. How do I know that number? Well, I did a measurement. Uh, I, I run the train at full speed, I placed a visual marker somewhere on my track and say at least one meter or one and a half or two meters further down the track I placed another visual marker. I run my train uh, over the track and with a stopwatch I click once and then I click another time. I know the distance between these markers so I can calculate the speed of this train. I can also use train controller to do a measurement fully automatic. Let's have a quick look. For an automatic measurement go to the automatic speed and brake uh, button and there go to the advanced fine tuning and there you can uh, select here to do one measurement, one, one measurement. Then uh, you place uh, uh, or you tell train controller which sensor you are going to use. Uh, I'm going to use Northwest 1, the sensor over here. And then I'm going to use Northeast 1, the sensor in the next block. Uh, and of course I uh, measure the distance between those two centimeters. Say for this example that was 160 centimeters. Now I can put this train on maximum speed, it does not yet start to drive, it only starts to drive, I place it of course before the first sensor, then I click start, look it starts to drive at its maximum speed, and now uh, train controller will, yeah I'm not running a train now so it won't show, but train controller waits until it sees this sensor, then it starts the clock until it sees that sensor, it stops the clock, then a window pops up that says this train ran 78 km per hour. And that is how you can do a uh, automatic speed measurement and then when you have that maximum speed you fill in the number over here. You also do it one time if this train ever runs backwards on the track you need to fill in the backward speed too. Uh, most of the time those speeds are not 100% exactly the same, that does not matter, just fill in your measurement value. Then I always put the deceleration slider at zero and the acceleration slider, yeah I put it at a value that is visually pleasing to me. It doesn't matter where it is as long as you like what you see. Uh, now that is not all, we have to first prepare our locomotive, the DCC decoder that is inside it. It has to be programmed in a specific way for train controller to uh, work best with this decoder. So let's also have a look at the DCC programming. Alright, so we bought ourselves a nice new locomotive, say this one. Uh, we need a DCC decoder inside, so we also buy a DCC decoder. Most of the time I use a Lockpilot Basic because it does exactly what I need and it is not too expensive. Then we build that decoder in and yeah, that is quite easy because you just plug in that connector. Uh, by the way, it depends on the locomotive what type of connector you have and you of course have to buy a DCC decoder with that same type of connector. That is unfortunately not quite standardized. There are uh, four or five different types of connectors available. Uh, once that is done we have to program the DCC decoder and for that we use our command station. I use a DR5000 but you can have an equals or a, an uh, IntelliBox or whatever you have. You need to be able to program DCC decoders which is done by so called uh, CV values. Uh, what the CV tell you? Uh, I don't know the C but the V stands for value. Um, 
and uh, yeah you have to refer to your uh, user manual of your programming station or your your command station to see what you have to do also you have to have a look at the user manual of the dcc decoder that you built in in this case the walk pilot basic and there we have these cv values and we have to program a couple for this locomotive to work best with train controller and the first uh, cv value that we are going to have a look at is number 29 over here that is the configuration register there we are going to make sure that the uh, the number of uh, the bit 4 is set to 0 uh, because we don't want the speed curve through this uh, table we want the speed curve to be linear uh, uh, via cv2 5 and 6 so this has to be put on 0 and then uh, the next bit in uh, CV29 has to be put on 1 and that uh, means that we are going to use 28 speed steps usually the value for a register 29 is 2 this number uh, 2 because that means that all the others are 0 and then the total value this all adds up of course the total value is 2 then it works nice the only other things that you may want to use yeah just add the values over there as long as number 4 stays 0 okay Okay, let's go up a bit and uh, have a look at the CV2, which is the minimum speed of the engine. And uh, this Lockpilot Basic, we can enter these numbers over here. The number that you need, yeah, you can't tell on forehand. Uh, you just have to try it out. Put the speed on speed step 1 and then your train should crawl. It has a very low speed. Uh, but it should drive reliable and not that if it comes across a dust particle that it already stops again uh, you need a reliable but low speed so tune your cv value 2 until you reach a reliable low speed then we go to the acceleration that is cv number three we put it simply on the lowest possible value for this particular dcc decoder that is zero maybe in your if you have a different brand of decoder that could be one or another value zero or one should do the trick also the deceleration that is the cv value four we put it on zero uh, or at least at the lowest possible value in this case that is zero then we come to the, uh, the, the the thing that we are really looking for the maximum speed of this locomotive some people like to use let's say the original maximum speed that the locomotive can have me i personally don't like those high speeds on my mini model railway layouts i like low speeds but that is a personal preference but what i always do is tune cv5 such that i get a pleasant visual looking speed for this particular locomotive on this particular model railway layout so it is up to you a personal preference but uh, as long as you give it a number that you like then all is okay and then uh, cv6 that is the medium speed we have to put it on half of cv5 and this is the preparation that we do and now we are ready for that speed measurement that we just talked about a minute ago so here we are again in train controller we did our cv value programming we did our speed measurement for the maximum speed and for this particular locomotive it turned out to be 78 so that is the number that i fill in over here then uh, we already talked about this deceleration at zero and acceleration at a visual pleasing uh, number and then we click the automatic speed and brake we enter this new window and that is where we do a, uh, a simple calibration 
First of all, we put this maximum slider at uh, the maximum. This, this is the slider for the maximum speed, but we already tuned CV5 such that it has a nice visual speed. So all I need to do here is put it on max, which means it will go to speed step 28. And in this case, the train will then drive 78. So now train controller knows, and this is important, now train controller knows if I give this locomotive speed step 28, it will run at 78. It needs that number to calculate uh, when to start braking and when to stop the train. Then we also uh, go to this minimum slider. The minimum slider, yeah, if you put it on zero, it will never drive. So we put it on speed step one because we already programmed CV2, which was the minimum speed, such that at speed step one, the train has a reliable low speed. Uh, if you cannot find, you, you don't know with the slider what is speed step one. And the trick there is to click once on this green uh, throttle then with your arrow key give it one step and now it is running at speed step one and then press apply throttle and then you know that it is exactly at speed step one that is the trick that i always use uh, and then there is a tricky one uh, uh, in train controller you have to put this medium slider uh, not at the medium speed of the max speed but at 40 yeah, how do I know what is 40? Well, we can, of course, do another uh, measurement. I can put this slider at, uh, yeah, uh, let me guess, 40. Uh, then I can do a measurement with the train beca because I still have these visual markers. Or we use train controller to do a measurement. And if it is not driving 40, well, then I, I tune this slider a little bit to the left or a little bit to the right until I found that it drives 40. And then I have uh, calibrated the uh, locomotive for train controller to do its thing. Let's cancel out. And now what we have accomplished is that if I start this train, let me get out of edit mode, let me start this train again. It will ramp up to 40. That was that minimum slider that we uh, just uh, uh, had set to the correct value. It will now run approximately 40 kilometers per hour. Oh, I have to start this thing also because otherwise it will never drive. And now it will yeah, drive into the next block there. It will accelerate to its maximum speed, which for this particular locomotive we had programmed to be 78. Or rather we programmed it DCC value to a visual pleasing speed and it turned out to be 78. Then it enters this block where it slows down to 40. That looks good on your layout that the train already slows down in the block before it enters the stage over all those turnouts and then it reaches the brake marker and then it further breaks down at 80 centimeters was the stop marker and train controller was able to calculate exactly these centimeters from the known speed that we have given it well this was quite a mouthful uh, let's uh, stop this video now and in the next video we will have a look at how we can accomplish these, uh, this uh, slowdown in the previous block in a different way with using a yellow signal and that is also fun. Maybe see you back there and in the meantime, yeah, have fun. <laughs>